Now, the, the way the shuttle check works is you have two sources of air. In, in, this would be out to wherever you're going to go. Okay, so there's a little check disc in there. It's a disc, actually, and it, whatever pressure is greater, it slides to one side or the other. So if the pressure comes in here and that's greater, it slides over there, goes out. If the pressure on this end comes greater than this pressure, pushes the other way, and it goes to the cylinder. Like th several weeks ago at the New Jersey Life Stammers, we had a uh, train separation. Steve Bertina was on the first car behind the engine. Train separated, the world came to an end. The locomotive, the 1361, went about another three feet. Brakes came on, just the momentum carried it that far. The tender brakes locked up, stopped the locomotive, the car stopped, everything comes to a halt. Right there. No problem. Now I lost all the air in the, in the main reservoir and I'm going to work on that. Uh, Big John suggested that we use maybe a choke or some kind of a flow uh, check or something that I won't dump all the air because when I had to rehook it up, I had to wait for the air. This would be, anybody out there knows air brakes, this is chamber D. Chamber D. Now, let me explain that. The reason for the auxiliary reservoir is quite simple. Um, Back in the day when they had the old 440s, four, four you know, out there in the West, the old West they had three cars. They made a brake application. If they had air brakes then, I guess they did, uh, uh, automatic air brakes. They put the air brake on, made a brake pipe reduction. Almost immediately, the pressure dropped and the brakes would come on. As the trains got larger over the years, hundreds of cars, it, the brake pipe is two and a half inches or two or two and a half inches in diameter. So when you made a five pound brake pipe reduction, it took quite a bit of time for that brake line, the train line, the whole entire mile long brake line to, to evacuate that five pounds. So the train started, you know, it took a longer time for those brakes to come on. So as the guy's riding down the railroad and he's watching the signal, doing whatever he's doing, looking up, first thing you know, bingo, he's down to 10 pounds and he's not even paying attention. All right, so, so now you've made too much of an application. Okay, so what they did was they come up with this little tank, and of course on a locomotive, the little tank is about that big. But on my locomotive, the tank is only about a little, little tank like that, about the size of a small jar. And I'm making the brake pipe reduction in here. I'm making a five pound reduction in here. That automatically will evacuate this line to, to match this tank. I don't have to look at it. I have a detent on my, my lever. As I come back with it, I hit that detent, I hold it there, that's five pounds, and the brakes just come on, and that's what's called the service stop. They just come on gradually, and it's just like driving a car. You don't come up to a traffic light jam your brakes on, you start to brake, brake gradually. It works the same way. You put it on there, it comes to a beautiful stop. Now, anybody that's driven, riding, in, ridden on my trains can say, wow, those brakes really work good. And they do. They work great, and I'm a major advocate of using these brakes. I don't like vacuum at all, and a lot of guys at PLS use vacuum, and it's quite successful. And it is an easier brake to operate, to, to, um, to build, but, and it's less expensive. But um, you don't have the fail-safe with it. It's either on or off. With mine, I had the fail-safe, which is the major reason for doing it. And, it. and it works prototypically. It works exactly like the prototype of his full-size brother. It works exactly the same. And I've never had a problem with moisture because it's all the triple valves and everything are all done with diaphragms. So they're rubber diaphragms and moisture really doesn't affect it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, explanation of the air brake system. Um, I developed it about 1985 and um, it took me quite a while to perfect it. And uh, just recently I've been able to miniaturize it. So um, that's been the, the big um, difference in being able to bring it out in for inch and a half scale. So uh, if there's any questions please email me and I'll be glad to answer them for you. I'll try to get any pictures up there. Right now we're having a stuffed cabbage. Well I'm telling you this is great stuff. I'm going to have a little wine with it. It's a cheap bottle of wine, a five dollar bottle, but after a couple of drinks what's the difference? Nobody knows. Nobody cares. So, so here's to you and your live steam projects. We'll see you again on the next video.